The Funky 4 Plus 1. The Funky 4 Plus 1 is one of the first organized crews in hip hop. In fact, according to its members, The Funky 4 Plus 1 and Grandmaster Flash and the Furious 5 are two of the first organized hip hop crews. The core of The Funky 4 Plus 1 starts with KK Rockwell and Keith Caesar, also known as Keith Keith. KK Rockwell and Keith Keith recruited Shaw Rock one of the only female MCs in the Bronx at the time. So the original members of the Funky Four, before they even had a name, are KK Rockwell, Keith Caesar, Shaw Rock, and DJ Breakout. This was at least two to three years before the first rap records were released. Raheem, who would years later join Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, joined Shaw Rock, Keith Keith, and KK Rockwell, making it the Funky Four. Raheem would rock with the Funky Four for a short period, but he ended up being recruited by Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Four at the time. When Raheem departed the Funky Four, Shah Rock departed for a brief moment as well. During this time, DJ Breakout will hold auditions to put the group back together. It's said that Busy B and Special K from the Treacherous Three were amongst those to come and audition for the group. But ultimately, the two to make the cut would be Little Rodney C and MC Jazzy Jeff, who rocked with the Magnificent Seven from 1976 to 1979. So at this point, the lineup of the group is KK Rockwell, Keith Caesar, Little Rodney C, MC Jazzy Jeff, and DJ Breakout. Shaw Rock would shortly return back to the group, and they would name themselves the Funky Four Plus One. So. The lineup that most of the general public got a chance to witness, or at least hear, on their first two recorded singles, Rapping and Rockin' in the House, and That's the Joint, is Shaw Rock, MC Jazzy Jeff, Keith Caesar, Lou Rodney C, KK Rockwell, DJ Breakout, and DJ Barron of the Brothers Disco. There was a lot of movement there, but Lou Rodney C says that in a three month period in 1979, all groups were changing members. Busy B was between the L Brothers and the Cold Crush. JDL and Kaz were doing their thing. Raheem left the Funky Four to go to the Furious. But no crews were formed yet with the exception of the Funky Four and the Furious Five. DJs Breakout and Burn were part of the Brothers Disco, a collective who gave parties and had their own sound system. Shaw Rock tells me that they had the best sound system out of all the crews and they modeled their sound system after Disco King Mario's system. They call their system the Mighty Sasquatch. One of the most unique characteristics of their sound system was the huge tin barrel-like garbage cans that they fashioned into speakers. According to members of the group, they had the clearest sound, no muffles, no humming. They had the clearest sound system out of all the crews. The Funky 4 Plus 1 were the first to do many things. According to Shah Rock, they're the first to each have their own mics and mic stands. Because of the syncopated dance moves that they did, it was required that every MC had his own mic. According to members of the group, before the Funky 4, a whole crew of MCs would share one or two mics. They were also known for their harmonizing. Shah Rock says that the harmonizing and the dance steps were definitely inspired by the period that Raheem was with the group. Raheem was known as a credible singer, and you will hear that later in some of his works with Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. The Funky Four were also amongst the first to use smoke machines and echo chambers. The group took all of the money that they earned from parties and put it back into the group to buy these things. The Funky Four introduced hip hop to the downtown scene and the punk rock audience. They were the first MCs to play the Mud Club, Soho, The Ritz. But in the hood, the Funky Four played 23 Park, Prospect Park, 169th and Fulton, Cedar Park, and their home base was the T-Connection. Fab Five Freddy, a graffiti artist who hung around the downtown art scene, will play tapes of the Funky Four for Deborah Harry, leader of the group Blondie. Blondie really enjoyed these tapes and she really liked what she was hearing from this new art form called hip hop. She loved it so much that her connections and influence would land the Funky 4 Plus 1 a spot in history. The first rap group on national television with their appearance on Saturday Night Live. But let's go back. Bobby Robinson, 
owner of Enjoy Records, was just starting to scoop up the hottest rap acts on the street. His son was a member of the Disco Four, and his nephew, Spoonie G, was also an MC, and he was hearing hip hop all around him. His Enjoy Records imprint had been in effect for decades, but he needed something new, and this something new would be rap music. After quizzing his family members on who the hottest groups in the street were, the name Funky Four kept coming up, along with Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. So in 1979, the Funky Four Plus One became the first rap group to sign with Bobby Robinson's Enjoy Records, and they released Rappin' and Rockin' the House. Rappin' and Rockin' the House was even longer than Rapper's Delight, which clocked in at about 15 minutes. At 16 minutes long, Rappin' and Rockin' the House is a lesson on harmonizing, passing the microphone back and forth, and making a crew of MCs cohesively sound like one unit. Produced by Pumpkin and based on a reworking of Cheryl Lynn's Gotta Be Real, Rappin' and Rockin' the House did not nearly reach the levels of success as Rapper's Delight. But what it did do, at least in the eyes of the Bronx hip hop community, was finally put an authentic Bronx hip hop group on the map. According to the Funky 4 Plus 1, they were just teenagers signing contracts back in these days. They woke up and suddenly one day their contracts had been sold to Sugar Hill Records. In 1980, the Funky 4 Plus 1 will release one of their best records in my opinion. That's the joint on Sugar Hill Records. That's the joint, based on a reworking of Rescue Me by Taste of Honey, is another one of those instrumentals where the Sugar Hill Band, consisting of Keith LeBlanc, Doug Wimbish, Bernard Alexander, Ed Fletcher, and others, play almost as good if not better than the original. And that's the joint carried on that tradition of that first handful of records that had been released by 1980, of being just a feel-good party record for the time. Featuring ad-libs and background party noises by the Furious Five, their label mates, That's the Joint is a classic that still resonates today. But sadly, even though this was only their second recording, it will be the last as the original group. A few things will happen between 1980 and 1982 when their next release, Do You Wanna Rock, was released as the Funky Four. Charlie Ahern an amateur movie director at the time, will bump into Busy B in the Bronx. After witnessing hip hop culture firsthand, Ahern decided to do a documentary about hip hop. According to all of the members of the Funky Four, this documentary was supposed to be about the Funky Four Plus One. But because contracts had been signed with Sugar Hill Records, the Funky Four Plus One was not able to appear in the documentary. Their new friend Deborah Harry had a pretty good lawyer they said he could get them out of their contracts, but only two MCs were willing to leave, K.K. Rockwell and Little Rodney C. At that moment, Double Trouble was born. Double Trouble would go on to play a pivotal role in the Wild Style movie. Here's a little story that must be told. About two cool brothers that were put on hold. They tried to hold the Funky back. Four, minus K.K. Rockwell and Little Rodney C, and now rolling with Ike C from the Zulu Nation, and also DJ Wizkid, released Do You Wanna Rock, which was based on Before I Let Go by Frankie Beverly and Mays. Do You Wanna Rock was a good record, but it just lacked the chemistry of those first two records because two of the members were now gone. Within this time period, the Funky Four would record but not release Square Biz, which was based on Square Biz by Tina Marie. And it was a hot track that would have probably done good in that time, but for some reason it was never released, probably due to copyright issues. Come on, get down. Well, it's time to say. We're gonna say a new rock. Funky Four is here, and it's party time. We're gonna rock the house. Without a doubt, I'm 
There was also Superstars that was musically based on Gary Newman's Cars. This is another track that would have probably done well at the time, but for some reason was unreleased. Also recorded but not released was King Heroin, which MC Jazzy Jeff would rework and release later in his solo career. King Heroin was based on For the Love of Money by the OJs. This is one of those tracks that on the Sugar Hill label, different groups would fight for different instrumentals that the Sugar Hill band created. This instrumental was track for track, the same as Step Off by Grandmaster Melly Mel and his New Furious Five. From what I'm told by many of the musicians and MCs on the label, the rappers would fight back and forth for the attentions of Sylvia over whatever track was hot. So you could have multiple tracks by different groups, and whichever track she thought was the best was the tracks that were released. Perhaps that's why Step Off was released and King Heroin was not, but it was unreleased. Now back to the timeline. 1983 the pivotal year that I always talk about. The Funky Four released Feel It, The Mexican. This was based on The Mexican by Babe Ruth, which was a very popular breakbeat in the streets. This recording did not make an incredible amount of noise at the time. In fact, one of the most notable things about Feel It was the introduction with Shaw Rock's voice. It's been sampled a few times in more recent years in different car commercials and other things in the mainstream. Again, 83 was a pivotal year, and some of the Sugar Hill template just was not working in 1983, as far as the musical background of the tracks. Therefore, the Mexican failed to make a lot of noise. But in the tradition of all the Sugar Hill recordings, the instrumentation was marvelous on the record. It was a well put together, well produced record. So 1983, the Funky Four just did Feel It, The Mexican. Little Rodney C and KK Rockwell, Double Trouble, had done the Wild Style movie, and they just signed to Capitol Records and released a song called Think About It under the name The Deuce. They could not use Double Trouble because Stevie Ray Vaughan owned the rights to that name. Think About It was produced by Ted Currier and David Spratley, who had also produced Fly Girl and other songs for the Boogie Boys and work with George Clinton on his solo output like Atomic Dog on Capitol. This record failed to make any major noise. Even though it was on Capitol Records, it was just not promoted and not many people even heard it at the time. It's one of those footnotes in the history of hip hop that many of us just found out about within the last few decades. By 1984, the Funky 4 Plus 1 were no more. Shah Rock had been performing with fellow pioneering female MCs, Debbie D, who was down with Wanda D, and Lisa Lee, who was down with Africa Bambada's Cosmic Force. And Lisa Lee also played a pivotal role in Wild Style a few years before. Harry Belafonte was auditioning hip hop artists for a movie called Beat Street that he was about to produce. Shah Rock tells me that herself, Debbie D, and Lisa Lee went to audition. At that time, the Us Girls were born. They had a small and memorable role in the movie Beat Street, and they were on the soundtrack. Shaw Rock was legally still under contract to Sugar Hill Records, and she really didn't think that Sylvia Robinson, owner of Sugar Hill Records, would let her perform on the movie. But Sylvia allowed it. Her one stipulation was that Grandmaster Melly Mel and his new lineup of The Furious Five would be able to perform in the movie and perform the title track. And as history tells us, that happened. Another notable Sugar Hill recording group was the Treacherous Three who played a part in Beat Street. In fact, Cool Mo D tells me that originally Beat Street was written with them in mind as a documentary. But Shaw Rock says at the time that her, Debbie D, and Lisa Lee went to audition that no other groups from the Sugar Hill label were there at the time. Fast forward one year later to 1985, MC Jazzy Jeff secured a recording contract with Jive Zomba Records recording home of the rap group Houdini. 
Jeff released an LP called On Fire, and it contained King Heroin, We Just Wanna Have Fun, Mix So I Can Go Crazy, amongst others. The financial backing of a label like Jive Zomba via Arista put Jeff in the position where he could do a nice video for King Heroin. Labels at the time still weren't doing nice videos for rap artists. In fact, most didn't even have videos at all. Jeff's version of King Heroin, though lyrically a lot like the one they did years before Sugar Hill, was updated musically for 1985 standards. A few years later in 1987, Lil Rodney C and KK Rockwell would return to Enjoy Records and release a song called Are You Ready as the Deuce 2. Even though the Funky Force history of recording was a relatively short one, their impact on music cannot be denied. There are some whisperings that the original group may be getting back together to possibly record and tour soon. Shaw Rock's autobiography is available, Luminary Icon, and Little Rodney C has recently recorded some music. The Funky 4 Plus 1 is another of those pivotal groups from the Foundation era whose musical influence still can't be denied, even to this day. This is Jay Kwan, MC, DJ, producer, hip hop historian. You check out more information on Foundation Era MCs at my website, thefoundation.com. That's the, T-H-A, foundation.com. You can also hit me up on all social media at Jayquan V-A. That's J-A-Y-Q-U-A-N-V-A. You can also hit me up personally at Jayquan at jayquan.org on email. Jayquan at jayquan.org.